morning and welcome to worship of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, are, we have a triune God who calms our fears and dispels our doubts by the power of his word. And we learn more about that in his word and in the sermon uh, today. We will follow the order of service of word and sacrament from our 93 hymnals as printed in your bulletin. And we begin with our uh, first hymn, the first two verses of Jesus, Lover of My Soul. As you are comfortable and as you are able, please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, 
Hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. In our lessons, we see our Lord in control, our Lord calming all of our fears and doubts and reviving and restoring faith that included his prophet Elijah after the tremendous show at Mount Carmel. Elijah is, I suppose you could say, down in the dumps. And what does the Lord do? He quiets his heart, stills his soul, not by fire or earthquake or wind, but by a gentle whisper. 1 Kings chapter 19. He came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord suddenly came to him, that is Elijah, saying, Why are you here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Then the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is passing by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains and shattered rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. 
After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a soft, whispering voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and he went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. Then a voice came to him and said, Why are you here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the wilderness of Damascus. When you get there, you are to anoint Haziel as king over Aram. You will also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, from abel Mahaloah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Haziel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. But I have preserved in Israel 7,000 whose knees have not bent to Baal and whose lips have not kissed him. This is the word of our God. Our psalm for this day is Psalm 73, D from our Psalter. You find the words printed there set to a familiar hymn tune of O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Continue now in God's word with our second lesson from Romans chapter 8. Familiar words to us as the Apostle Paul reminds us that whatever God's plan for this earth, he does have our eternal interests in mind and he will complete his plan to his glory and for our salvation. Romans chapter 8. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. Because those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then will we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed, who did not spare, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Who will bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, who died 
and more than that was raised to life, is the one who is at God's right hand and who is also interceding for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, faith is being sure about what we hope for, being convinced about things we do not see. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for this day from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Immediately, Jesus urged the disciples to get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed the crowd, he went up onto the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. By then the boat was quite a distance from shore, being pounded by the waves because the wind was against it. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and cried out in fear, It is a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat, walked on the water, and went toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he was afraid. As he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. Those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of our Savior. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn, 841, Entrust Your Fear and Doubting.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lesson for consideration this morning is the first lesson from 1 Kings 19. Dear friends, you would think that things would be different after a miraculous display of the one true God sending fire down from heaven, you would think there would be a celebration, a great turn back to the Lord God. The people, after seeing this miracle at Mount Carmel, acknowledged the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. 450 of Baal's prophets were slain. Rain returned after three and a half years of drought. Surely, Israel's spiritual rebellion was over, led by a king and a queen who finally saw the power of God. Yet, the response was not one of repentance. Scripture says Jezebel, the queen, sent a messenger to say to Elijah, may the gods punish me severely and even double it if by this time tomorrow I have not made your life like one of theirs. Scripture says Elijah was afraid and so he ran for his life. He ran a day's journey into the wilderness, and there under a broom tree he prayed, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. After some sleep and God's providence of food and drink, he walked 40 days and 40 nights from there on that physical refreshment to Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And scripture says there, then the word of the Lord suddenly came to him saying, why are you here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant they have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Frustrated, angry, confused, Elijah pours it all out before the Lord. From his perspective, his ministry has been a total failure. It has been in vain. The royal house, instead of supporting God's prophet, is out to kill him. The people, after the tremendous display of God's power in drought and at Mount Carmel, still reject him. Notice how Elijah even addresses God as the Lord, the God of armies. What you might read in other translations as God Almighty or the God of hosts. It's an address that recognizes God's supreme power and strength. This is the creator of the universe. And yet things do not seem to be working accordingly. Perhaps in his analysis of the situation, Elijah even blames God for the apparent lack of success. Elijah has gone to some very dark places in his mind and in his heart. He keenly feels his loneliness. You can hear the doubt whispering in his own head and heart and mind. This doesn't add up. There's no way out of this no good situation. Is this what being a prophet of God is all about? Is this my reward for being faithful? for being, in my mind, the last of the faithful. It doesn't seem worth it. And I'm sure you can identify with Elijah. Based on the reality that you see with your own eyes around you in this sinful world that's just getting worse and worse 
and darker and darker. Sin is hiding, if you will, in plain sight. And people don't recognize it. They are being swallowed up by it right and left. Our world of instant gratification takes no prisoners when it comes to feelings and urges and following them. What feels good must be right. And no one can tell me otherwise. No one can say that I am wrong. And if we have opportunity to lovingly steer someone in the right direction according to God's word, what happens? We're ignored. We're laughed at. We're taunted or even persecuted like Elijah was. And then the devil is there to stir up doubt in our hearts all the more. No one said that being a Christian would be easy. In fact, Satan whispers, it's easier to give in to everything around you and selfishly seek what you desire. No muss, no fuss. And as difficult as it is to deal with sin outside in this world, it's just as difficult in dealing with sin that is inside of you. There are sins you struggle against every day. Sins you know are wrong. But when the tests come, you fail miserably. The battle for your own soul is a weary one. It's as weary as watching the sin in the outside world take its toll around you. And maybe, maybe you blame yourself. Accuse yourself of not being the Christian you know you should be or that you hoped you would be at this point. You wallow in your own self-pity and despair at your lack of progress. Maybe you're even tempted to blame God as you struggle. You feel isolated, tired, worn, and weak. Blessedly, your God does not leave you in such dire straits, but refreshes you just like he did the prophet Elijah. In mercy, in mercy God bid Elijah go and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is going to pass by. Then come those dramatic events of a great wind that shattered rocks before the Lord, an earthquake that shook the ground, a fire. The scripture says that the Lord was not in them. Yes, everything is under his control, no question. Everything in heaven and on earth is at God's disposal to do as he desires. However, is it through those miraculous and mighty signs that God chooses to communicate, to interact with people on this earth? Is it through these wondrous signs God wishes to be known and honored and glorified? Or is it through a gentle whisper, a gentle word of grace to a wayward, weary sinner like Elijah and like you? As the beloved hymn goes, come not in terror as the king of kings, but kind and good with healing in thy wings. Dear friends, what can heal? What can soothe? What can strengthen more than the gentle whisper of the gospel? It is the gospel that refreshes and renews faith that falters in doubt. It is the gospel that is foolishness to all who reject its message. However, to those who heed its call, it is the very saving power of God. It is more powerful than wind, earthquake, or fire. It has the power to change hearts for eternity 
and ready them for eternity and sustain them until eternity. The power of the whisper is not something that's kept secret from you. It is out here openly available. It is being proclaimed to you now here in word and sacrament. It is proclaimed to you through personal Bible study and devotion at home. As it revives you, it allows you to see the error of all your doubts. It humbles you, humbles you like it did Elijah. It begs an answer to God's question, why are you here? Or in Jesus' words to the apostle Peter, why did you doubt? You've got someone who can carry the burdens for you. You've got someone you can trust through the storms of life. You've got someone onto whom you can cast all of your anxieties and all of your cares about this world and about yourself. Picture Elijah doing that as he says for the second time, humbly, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies, but the people of Israel have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking to take my life. Suddenly, because of that gentle whisper given by the Lord of free and faithful grace, there is no longer resentment, but relief. Elijah's soul has been stilled. Oh yes, you might continue to wonder about things. You might shake your head at this world in disbelief. You might shake your head at yourself in frustration. But you have a place to put all of those frustrations right at Jesus' cross. And blessedly, when you put them at Jesus' cross, they will trouble you no more. Should fear fill you again, should Satan whisper again and succeed in stirring up doubt, go right back to the cross, right back to Jesus, and have your soul stilled by his love. As the Apostle Paul wrote, what will separate you from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing in all creation, not even death itself, can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How do you know that? Because he tells you. You have a God who is always with you who can lead you in the present and guide the future on your behalf. You have a God who sees all, knows all, and orders things for the sake of your eternal good. More than that, he has gathered you into a fellowship of believers. It's a fellowship that extends even beyond these walls, even beyond the people that you see sitting here this morning in this specific spiritual body that surrounds you. You are a part of the great, of the invisible, holy Christian church throughout the world, which has endured from generation to generation. A church that relies solely on God's word of truth and its firm foundation. More than that, he forgives you all of your sins. He forgives you for all the doubts that keep coming up in your mind and in your heart that keep you from trusting him completely. He forgives you for the times where you assume that he just doesn't care. He forgives you for the times you assume he is so powerless to help you from any situation. Through the example of Elijah, he shows you his great patience and his great mercy. As he revived the faith of his prophet by his saving name, did you notice all those capital letters this morning? L-O-R-D. So he renews your faith in that same saving name 
by showing you a Savior who has triumphed in every way, triumphed for you. A Savior who focuses on you so that you can keep your focus on him all the way to heavenly glory. All these assurances come to you by the powerful whisper of the gospel, a whisper that calms all fear and doubt, a whisper that can even spur you on to shouts of praise during distress and difficulty, a whisper that revives your own heart and restores your soul, a whisper that says the Lord is near, the Lord is faithful. So let him be your refuge forever. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and keep you in the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as our offering is received. Please stand as we pray. We give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, with our whole heart, we glorify your name forever. With you there is righteousness and peace, with you our land shall prosper. Your steadfast love and faithfulness is our hope in an evil day. 
We confess, O Lord, that like Elijah, we too easily become discouraged. Most of what we hear and read about is bad news. The many crimes against your holy laws that we hear about and the many transgressions we see committed by those around us often leave us wondering whether anyone is still serving you. In our own lives, we have also often failed to heed your still small voice by which you attempt to guide us. For our overemphasis of the negative aspects of your kingdom and for forgetting the positive, forgive us, O Lord. In the midst of the storms of this life, we need the strength of your Holy Spirit and the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us your Holy Spirit to keep our spiritual eyes focused on Jesus. When the waves of trouble begin to engulf us and we feel ourselves sinking, take our hands of faith, raise us above our doubts, and replace our fears with courage. Protect our nation, O Lord, from enemies within and without, and preserve your church in your saving word. Be a source of hope for the discouraged. Be with the sick and the bereaved. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We prepare our hearts to receive the refreshment of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. You may be
be seated as we will first commune those who wish to remain in their pews today. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, this gift which he has given especially for you, strengthen and keep you in the one true faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and be assured that your sins are forgiven. Amen.
supper is ended, we stand and we sing, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He knows his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. may be seated as we sing our final hymn. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house again on this Sunday. Privileged as always to lead you in worship. Special word of welcome to our guests that are here or online. Our prayer is that you come to the Savior's feet uh, one of these other weeks and receive more rest for your soul. Such an important truth that we know, but such an important truth uh, that we so struggle with as we walk in this world. Uh, the announcements are before you. I'll simply add that our VBS was a success Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday under the theme, 
making tracks. What were three students on Wednesday became four on Thursday and seven on Friday. And not only did the uh, young ones have fun, as they often do, but so did the adults. Probably more than we should have, I don't know. But uh, it was a tremendous success. From this, uh, from this uh, uh, plateau, if you will, we seek to go higher and be stronger for next year. And uh, please keep that in your prayers as that is thought out and planned for uh, more in advance than this year was. And may the Lord bless it as he sees fit. Remember again that you go from here, his dearly loved child. Despite what you see out there, you are his and his alone. Nothing can snatch you from his hand, and he will be there to strengthen you and be your rock and refuge forever. Have a good week.